Hi, everybody. I wanted to go over uh, the testing expectations with you prior to you beginning your test. The test will open at 3 p.m. on Thursday, and it will be due no late, meaning you have to have finished it no later than 3 p.m. on Monday, March 1st. Since this is our first time taking a test in Alex, I wanted to make sure you understand how it works. So there's a few things I wanna show you. First off, when you go into Blackboard and click on course documents, you're going to see the written test instructions that uh, accompany this video. They're pretty lengthy, but it's very, very important that you understand each one of these points. So take a second, read each one of these things. By taking the test, you are agreeing by these terms, essentially, okay? When you are finished with your Alex test, you're gonna click exam one handwritten submission here. Actually, I will make this look like a student would see it, hold on. Okay, so you go to course documents and you'll see of course our link for Alex, we'll get to that in a second. You'll also, you'll see exam one handwritten submission. This is where you will go to submit your written work. So as you are working through the problems on the test, you should be writing down any math that you do, any kind of little logical notes about some of the conceptual questions, things like that. Whatever information you can give me to help me figure out what you were thinking. This is gonna let me give you partial credit on an online test. Okay, partial credit is really important in science classes because frequently we might make small little errors along the way or have one small misconception. Um, in an online test, you would get that whole question wrong. When we're in person, the, the work that you can show me, your dimensional analysis steps or notes about significant figures or your logic, that kind of stuff really helps me to give you some credit even if your final answer is wrong, which is quite frequently true, okay? So this is really for your benefit. So you're gonna be taking the test in Alex, but you're gonna be writing things down on paper. So make sure you have paper, a pencil. Uh, I think having a periodic table from lab is handy. And also I liked using my own calculator instead of the one built into Alex. You can use the one in Alex, that's okay, but um, I would not use other periodic tables from other resources. They will sometimes have different masses. So either the one I've given you in lab or the one that's built into Alex are the best options. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you how this submission would work once you're finished with the test. You're gonna to go to exam one handwritten. So you're gonna to have to use your phone or a scanner to first turn it into a PDF. If you need help with that, I have made a video here showing how to use Google Drive to do that, it's free. Any, any phone can do a pretty good job of this. Make sure that if you have written, if you've written up and down like a normal page that, that you're not showing me a PDF that's sideways, okay? You can rotate it right in the program before you save the file. So if you don't know how to get things cropped and rotated and ready and nice, easy to read, please watch this video before you take the test so you know what to expect. You can always go back to it afterward as well. Okay, so what you're gonna do is um, submit your PDF file by clicking on browse local files. I'm just gonna pick some random, we'll do one of our syllabus here. You'll see right here that, that this gives you a list of the proper file formats that are accepted in Blackboard. If you upload anything besides these types of files, I can't see it. So I need you to, to, to choose file types that are compatible with Blackboard. This will allow me to give you feedback also on your work um, right, right online. You'll be able to go in and see my comments directly. I think the easiest file type for something like this is PDF. So that's my general recommendation. Then you have to click this, I agree to submit my papers to the Global Reference Database. If you don't click that, I won't, it won't accept it. And then you would just click Submit. Now you are gonna get an email from Blackboard when you do this. It tells you that you've successfully submitted an assignment and it has a timestamp on it and everything. So you don't need to email me and ask whether the thing was submitted correctly or not. Also, you can always go check the grade book to see what you actually submitted. 
So this is my grade book. And of course, I'm not a student, so there's nothing submitted. But if I, if I have little lines here, it means it's something that hasn't been graded. And if I can click on the, uh, the item, then it means that you can, you can see whatever you submitted for that assignment. Okay, that's just by clicking on my grades. Super easy. Okay, so now about Alex, I wanna show you a couple things to pay attention to. So once you navigate to the test, it's going to tell you how you get one attempt. That means you wanna have a stable internet connection. If you feel like your internet's not stable, come to campus and spend some time in the learning commons or the library to take this test. It's only gonna be an hour long max, so you could even probably fit it in around your lab schedule, I'm guessing. There's 20 questions total and you have one hour to do it, unless you have accommodations from the Office of Accessibility Resources, in which case you need to email me and tell me which class you're in so that I can apply those to each test, all right? You have to ask for accommodations on each test, just like when we're in person, you would sign up with OAR directly. Don't rely on me to remember that you sent me your forms in the beginning of the semester, okay? Make sure you're telling me what accommodations you need and which class you're in, okay? So it's telling you once you start the test, you must finish it. So make sure you have an hour to spend, just get it done, okay? You can't go back into study mode once you've begun. So make sure you're prepared and you feel like you've reviewed everything you can. Then of course you just click start. And I wanna show you just one thing about um, that we're used to using in study mode that you should not be clicking on when you're on a test. So on a test, you have resources on the side. You have a calculator that's very handy. You have a peer, uh, some data. I don't think we need these too much yet, but it's there. And you have some periodic table references. These are nice, right? It tells you names and amounts and you know atomic numbers and everything. The one you don't wanna click on is on some of these problems, if they have a button that says explanation, don't use it. You will get zero points if you click on that button. If you have troubles, you can message me here, not for me, cause I would be messaging myself, but you can message me by clicking on the little email. And you can also of course, send me a normal email or a message in discord. If it's a specific question about a problem, you can message me individually rather than in the group chat and Discord, okay? Um, you need to keep in mind as the instructions tell you that any screenshots or photos that you take do not belong in external websites. That's uh, very illegal for a lot of reasons. Not only will it get you a zero on this assignment, but the company that owns Alex has every right to to um, pursue legal matters um, because you're taking their pro property and putting it on public websites. Um, so keep that in mind. This test is a individual assessment. So I want your work, not someone else's work. If I am confused by your handwritten work or if I am concerned cheating might have occurred I may ask you to come into a one-on-one -on -one Zoom session and give me an explanation for your answers, okay? Sometimes that's because I don't understand. Sometimes it's because I suspect that maybe somebody helped you with the test or you helped someone else with the test or something like that is going on. So this is just you. It's not a huge portion of your grade, you guys, but it is an important process to uh, review what you know, establish what you don't know, Remember that we're gonna have an in-person final. So this is really your chance to practice with the material and make sure you're on track so far this semester, okay? If you do have any difficulties, feel free to take a screenshot and email me or send me an individual message with it in Discord. If you have a Macintosh computer, Max, you, you have to hold Shift, Command, and the number four to take a screenshot. For Windows, it's holding the window key, looks like uh, you know the Windows icon between Control and Alt on most keyboards. So you hold Windows, Shift, and S. And then you just drag and drop to take a picture of the question. This might be something you have to do if um, 
you know, if there's a technical glitch and like Alex is giving you an error message or I don't know, there's a bunch of reasons, but you can do that to get help from me. You cannot do that to upload it to websites or send it to your friends or whatever. Keep in mind, each test is unique. People are not gonna have the same questions. So um, yeah, you should just really use this as an opportunity to learn, an op opportunity to know whether you're on track or not, okay? Plagiarism is not acceptable, so just don't bother, okay? Um, so yeah, after you're done with your test in Alex, there's 20 questions, you're gonna finish it up. Then right away, scan in your handwritten work and upload it right into Blackboard so I can give you extra points if, if you've earned it. If you don't scan something in for me within a reasonable time after your exam is done, then you're gonna get a zero on the test because then I have no evidence that you did it, okay? Um, so don't lose your papers, keep them somewhere safe. After you've submitted, you get that email verification and you know you've uploaded it correctly in Blackboard, okay? If you have any problems, reach out, let me know what's going on. Good luck.